Good afternoon to you, Mark Sutter, HurricaneTrack.com. It is Wednesday, the 27th day of October 2021, and it's time for the Hurricane Outlook and Discussion. Even though we won't be discussing any technical hurricanes, we certainly have some hurricane-like effects that we need to take a look at. That, of course, is the powerful storm off the coast of New England. We have the severe weather that is ongoing across the I-10 corridor. Stuff that I talked about yesterday has come to fruition. And it's not like I figured it out and I'm some omnipotent, oh, you knew everything. The forecasts were really good and we knew that this stuff was going to happen. And alas, it has happened. So let's see what's going on out there as we move through. No hurricanes to discuss, yet we do have this one area, 94L from that nor'easter, might get some more integrity in terms of the structural aspects of it to become a subtropical storm. And as I talked about yesterday rather passionately, that's a label. It's a scientific thing. The impacts are still the same, no matter what we call it. And, you know, you can see it from the satellite imagery here. There it is off the coast of New England. And we know what has happened. Over half a million people without power in parts of eastern Massachusetts and vicinity. 80, 90 mile per hour winds, lots of 60s and 70s as well. Trees down, coastal flooding. In fact, many people that watch my videos up there, if they're doing it through a, a laptop and a standard home internet connection, not today because you don't have any power. You'll have to see this another day. Doesn't matter what we call it. Hurricane so-and-so, nor'easter so-and-so, whatever. The impacts are the same. And we talked about this, uh, I have before, that you need to think about it in terms of how will this impact me. The weather is one area where I want you to be selfish. How will this impact me? What do I need to do about it? And then who do I need to tell to keep them aware and safe? So there's the situation off the coast of New England. We'll look at some video from it in a minute. Uh, from social media. This is another big time event, the storm system. Remember this whole area down here, I talked about it yesterday in my discussion, was painted in a 5% tornado risk. And you've seen the video by now, I'm sure, out of Orange off of Interstate 10. Orange, Texas getting a hit from a tornado there, as did Deweyville, where they had a big flood back in 2016 that I covered with uh, my colleague who is no longer with us, Carrie. Uh, so little Deweyville getting hit today. So these big time events, even though this is all calm and quiet, uh, there's still plenty of action up in the mid latitudes. And we do talk about that, not just hurricane centric here. All right. And then of course, out West, it's nice and calm now. Finally, after all the, uh, mayhem that you have endured lately, which has left snowpack. There's the Sierra. There's some snow in parts of the higher elevations of the Rockies. That is a good thing to see. You need the moisture. It's good for the economy. It's good for the skiing, whatever. It's good, especially when it's not too impactful. So speaking of impacts, this is Steve Pederak. Um, I've met him before. He is the producer for Jim Cantori. At least I think that's, yep. Uh, just making sure, you know, people change jobs. And it's been a while since I've seen Steve or Jim in person. I think since last year during Laura. But anyhow, this is video that Steve shared from, uh, I'll play it in a second, from Stephen McGuire from Situate in Massachusetts. A great location for this kind of weather. This is who this person is on Twitter. And I am now following, see it says it right there. This person, no, not unfollow. Stephen McGuire is going to be my new best friend up there. Uh, because, look, check this out. This is the video from Stephen's place. This is right on the water there in Situate. Holy mackerel. Um, look, they're used to this up there. This happens often. And they don't like it. It doesn't make it, you know, hey, this is fun. Uh, but this shows you the power of the Atlantic there getting pushed ashore. And in the future, this, you know, future meaning this coming winter, I fully, uh, as the scam calls come in, I love it that the phone will tell you scam likely. Um, I fully expect to get up there and I'm seriously, I'm going to get in touch with Steven and say, hey, look, let's put some cameras on that house and see it from point blank range because he's filming from inside. Hey, guess what? We have cameras that can film it from the outside and they can take a beating. We've done it in Cat 5 Hurricanes. So let's see what it does in Situate. We're going to be on top of that. So... Really appreciate that Steve Pederak shared this on Twitter. It's the good side of social media. We get to see what we 
you know, miss, so to speak. I couldn't get up there for personal reasons, uh, so at least we get to see it from this perspective. Also, a friend of mine from up Boston Way uh, shared this from his buddy, which this was taken down in the Marshfield area at the Green Harbor, and that's the ocean. The sea was angry that day, my friends. Was that George Costanza who said that? It was definitely angry this morning. Um, and this is what the power of these systems will do. You know, uh, you guys that live up there, you know this. But for everybody else, you know, just a gentle reminder. There's the energy with it right there. There's the vorticity signature. It looks like a hurricane, you know, what you would expect. But you notice how everything is kind of large and spread out. And then in the middle, is it, it's a little bit focused. A tropical cyclone where everything is bundled. If you want to get technical, you wouldn't have all that peripheral energy around it. It would be by itself. And you remember back to what those used to look like when we had them earlier this season. And look, it's a good thing that everything did shut down. Uh, I'm in the business of tracking hurricanes. That's what I've done for you know the better part of two decades plus. But in all reality, they hurt people. It's a big deal, and it leaves scars for generations. So we don't get excited uh, when they come for the reason that we know, hey, they're going to hurt people. We get excited because we get to put our technology to use and our knowledge to use to study them better. And so I look at this and I think to the past, that doesn't look like what a typical hurricane would. There's all that energy around it. It's spread out over a large area. So let's see over the coming days if this becomes more isolated in nature and you lose all this peripheral energy as this drifts to the south and east and that is what the hurricane center was talking about here and you can see that reflected in the five day or i guess east and then southeast because the atlantic's kind of warm out here you know and warmer than average so this will be something interesting to watch from a meteorological perspective how does this transition and morph over time there's the energy associated with the storm system little curly hue of it right there this is all spread out over a larger area but individually you get these little supercells like the one that went through near orange as i mentioned uh, orange texas as the radar tries to reload itself this is from mark nissenbaum usually i show you the radar animations that he puts together from fsu during hurricanes but this is pretty good i think i've got a hundred loop 100 frame loop in there. Um, there's some of the supercell activity that went out ahead of the main line. It pushed through Houston, cleared coastal Texas. Now it's roaring through Louisiana, Lafayette. Our good friend Rob Perillo down there with his hands full, headed towards Baton Rouge and eventually the New Orleans area. Zach Fredella and his area down, what is he at? Fox 8. He knows what's coming. It's going to be an active day as this plows through the I 10 corridor. And even up here along, what is that, I-20 or so, I think, if I know my interstates. Uh, but this was well forecast. It really was. I want to, you know, the Weather Service does a good job. You know, sometimes yeah, you get a busted forecast. The hurricanes this year and the season as a whole, especially this October sort of fiasco of everything collapsing, that's a larger scale thing. This was well advertised. We talked about it yesterday. We saw the enhanced risk yesterday. That came to fruition in Texas and Oklahoma and then today now there's an enhanced risk I'll show you that in a moment um, down across portions of the Gulf Coast so it's a big deal as it moves across there you guys be aware of it and be careful especially the truckers we need that supply chain undisrupted and we appreciate what you do out there be careful seriously if you know the truckers in your family friends whatever networks of you get on the old CBs I know you still use them you know, the world isn't all internet and text messaging. For real, let people know, look, this severe weather moving across I-10 can be a big problem. And look at this, the direct tie to the warmer than average Gulf. I talked about this. If the hurricanes aren't going to bleed off the energy, then it's going to get pulled north out of the Gulf of Mexico from these big mid-latitude storms that come out of the Rockies or the West Coast crossing the Rockies. And that is the source down here. Water holds heat. Heat is energy. Water vapor holds energy by the way of heat. And there you go. And off the coast of New England, look at that. Several degrees Celsius over here. I know you can't see it. Let's use blue. Uh, above the long-term average. And so, you know, 
what was it? Was it Meineke, the muffler company, pay me now or pay me later? Uh, I'm on the pop culture thing today. But the Atlantic is the same. The global heat budget, that's what we call it. The heat has to get dissipated somehow. Well, it doesn't have to. But when it's not used up, by tropical cyclones carving out these areas of upwelled and expended energy out of the ocean, then the mid-latitude storms tap into that energy and then they are themselves boosted more often than not. And we're only at October 27th. Imagine December 27th, November 27th, January 27th. You follow me? As the, as the seasons progress and we get more cold air involved, this contrast of all this warm water relative to average could make for a very busy time of it and my chance to get back up to situate and meet what is that Stephen Maguire in person you never know all right moving on along today's enhanced risk down along the Louisiana area you know you guys if it's not the hurricanes it's the severe weather right and it's again seriously it's that warm golf helping to fuel that it adds to it it really really does we call that instability or cape the available energy the potential energy as it were uh, and this is a problem down here as i said before i really want to push this in all seriousness take this very seriously talk to those truckers for real send the messages out facebook groups that you name it share zach his updates that he's going to do anybody else's now i just i know zach personally so that's why i pick him out um, and this is a problem. This severe weather, very impactful. And if just one person is killed, that's one person too many. And it's all a matter of just being aware of it. It's that simple. It is a solvable problem. Tomorrow, moving on along, this is today's outlook. This is tomorrow. It's in my neck of the woods. And as I suspected would happen yesterday, give me a little credit. I thought this would get pulled further south, and it did. Do you remember yesterday? It was kind of like that the slight risk and it did get pulled back to the west a little as well but I figured it would get pulled south a little bit more so CJ down here and Cornelius you guys heads up might be kind of active there in central Florida uh, and then in my neck of the woods as well finally things calm down by Friday just a general thunderstorm risk for the mid-Atlantic and extreme southeast Florida and then maybe just a little bit more energy starting to come in to the Pacific Northwest. We shall see. All right, so moving out into time via, let's do some time travel into the future through the GFS here, the 850 millibar chart. And this is the whole North Atlantic shot. And I'm gonna show you this for a reason. Let's outline it in blue real quick. What's what? This would be Spain and Portugal real quick. This is the west coast of Africa, all right? Here is the eastern parts of North America through the Carolinas and Florida. All right, everybody got the deal here? There's Central America and the northern part of South America. So now we know our geography. Look at this. We've got this high pressure area way far to the south. And there's another extension of it kind of ridging over into the Caribbean. And that, my friends, is a telltale signal as to why we don't have much activity. High pressure literally is just like it sounds. It's w the weight of the air. Not only does it push down on our shoulders through barometric pressure, but in the way it works globally, when that large chunk of air sitting out there, and that's what this is, I'll kind of highlight it. This represents a very large area of air, and it occupies space in the atmosphere, and it's measured in its thickness like a mountain would be using contours in geography or geology. Do you understand? We use the same thing in meteorology with height lines. But this represents a big area of air in three dimensions. And it's situated such that the tropical wave energy that comes off Africa, and there's still a little bit of it out there, is suppressed to the south. So it ends up dragging across South America, losing some of that energy, or ending up in the southeastern Pacific where the pressures are not as high and so they come out a little bit farther to the north take advantage of a lot of different favorable uh, parameters and we get Pamela and Rick and probably one more name storm in the East Pack if you can believe it I'll show you I think it's coming so let's get rid of all my drawings 
and I'll show you what's up. And watch right here. Maybe we get a tropical weather outlook for something there over the next few days. And then watch what happens with this, the concentrated area of vorticity. Does it become more sort of its own thing, so to speak, out here? Uh, kind of making a name for itself, literally. And I will say this real quick, and the pop culture thing continues. A couple people message me privately on Patreon, and they said if it gets named, would it? And it's over the ocean. Would it be a fish called Wanda? Ta -da. All right, enough of that. So let's move this. It's true. It would be a fish storm. I was trying to explain that to my kids the other day, and my son. He said it doesn't impact the fish. It just gives them rain. They like that. That's practical thinking from a ten-year-old. Um, so yes. So anyway, it moves out. Very, very, very limited. I don't know. I don't think it's going to do it. We'll see. Not much energy there with it over. That's about 36 hours out. Then it really starts to run out of time. This is this next bowling ball of energy coming through uh, that will give my area the chance of some precip and severe weather. Nothing down in the deep tropics to speak of. But watch again right out here. There's just a little bit of energy trying to coalesce off the coast of Africa. And finally... It tries to do so there by about 108 hours out. Maybe, maybe you see it right there. GFS picking up on it. Who knows? Maybe we get a little tropical weather outlook action, a brief depression. Who knows, right? That would be something else. We approach November and we get a system south of the Cabo Verde Islands. That would just be like, well, there you go. There's 2020 wrapped, or 2020. No, we don't want to do that again. 2021 wrapped up in a nice package for you if we get something that developed where it absolutely shouldn't. We shouldn't see that. That should be over here. And it's not, you know, because of what I talked about earlier, at least part of it. It's the way the pressure pattern is. And so anyway, move this on out. Day five, day six. You see that little doodad right there? Uh, tries to get going southwest of the Cabo Verde Islands, so we'll see. That's about five days out. It wouldn't be long from now that we would start to see it show up in the tropical weather outlook uh, from the National Hurricane Center. So we'll see what happens. We just move this out to about eight days, and that's far enough because, look, there it is, another one possibly in the eastern Pacific. But looky here, the pressures are still kind of high dipping down into the tropics so this energy isn't able to come across and get a foothold in the Western Caribbean. And I think everybody is pretty much fine with that. All right, on Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube, of course, Hurricane Track is the brand. We're on Patreon, supported by great people from all over the world. Patreon.com slash Hurricane Track. A lot of great stuff in the background for you. you know, benefits for you to support what we're doing and help shape the future of the project and that includes going up and covering storms in New England the desert southwest monsoons you know the severe weather in the plains all of this I'm gonna talk about with our current patrons on a special zoom meeting that we're gonna hold on Friday and then I'm gonna publish that for you all to see on YouTube later on you see what we talk about and you might want to get involved who knows maybe that's the impetus hey I want to get involved with that and you'll see what our plans are going to be going forward for 2022. All right? All right. That is it from me for the rest of today. And uh, you too, I guess. We're done. Uh, as always, thanks for tuning in. I do appreciate it. I am Mark Suddeth, HurricaneTrack.com. We'll talk again some more tomorrow afternoon.